In this week's video, I'm looking at exploring a couple of things you can do with position sticky. I can see them here. There's two really cool things I want to look at that you can do with them. They're a little bit out of the normal, just basic thing that you normally see with it. On top of that, I'm also going to be issuing you a challenge. So stick around. Before we see any cool tricks, here's a basic thing you can do with position sticky. So, you know, you have something, you know, maybe a really cool hero area, and then you have a navigation that's lower down. And then once that navigation gets to the top, it sticks to the top of the screen. So that's sort of the, the typical thing you'll see it for. We used to use JavaScript for this all the time, but now it's super easy to do it with native CSS, which is just really, really cool. Um, so for that, it's really simple how we did it. And I know I've been um, not in CodePen lately, but um, just because I have a whole bunch of examples here, uh, I thought it'd be easier. So I have on my nav is a position sticky and I have a top of zero, which means when it gets to zero, so a zero offset from the top there, it's going to stick just like that. Uh, now, if I came and changed this to say 100 pixels, that means instead of sticking when it gets there, it's sticking when it gets 100 pixels from the top, which is really awkward and you wouldn't use it in this case, but just to show you, it's really simple how it works. Um, and in that case, it's a lot like position fixed, but there's a big difference between how it works and how position fixed works. So uh, I want to take a look at that before we really understand it. So so here I have this position, all these code pens I have a link to in the description below. So if you want to play around with any of them, you can. Um, but here we have, this one is position fixed and this one is position sticky. Uh, the fixed one I haven't actually set any top, bottom, left or right. It's just, I've placed it in here. This is the parent. Um, so in both cases, this is the parent is the gray box that they're living in. This sticky I have put a top of zero on though. But you're gonna see as I scroll, the fixed one doesn't move. And that's what you'd expect with fixed. What people don't always realize with sticky, because here with my navigation, once it sticks into place, it's just, it's stuck there and it's stuck there forever. Um, whereas here with this one, it sticks when it gets to the zero top. But what people don't always realize is it still lives with inside its parent. So once that parent doesn't have room anymore, it slides off with it. So you see, I mean, that's I find that such a cool behavior. Um, now the reason that wasn't happening happening with this navigation is because the body is the parent for this one. So if the body is the parent, it's just going to stay in that spot. But if you have it living with inside of something like this, in this case, um, it does end up sort of stuck within that parent, which can come really in handy. So that's where we can have things get pushed out of the way. So if we look here uh, in my HTML, let's start with that. Um, I've just created a section for each one of them and I have a section title. So I have my section is the big box and the section title is this uh, thing we see floating around here on the side. So what we can do is we can come and say that my section title, because right now if I scroll everything just scrolls normally, but I could say that my section title has a, a position of sticky and we want to tell it where to stick so we're going to say top of zero. So now what's going to happen is when it gets to the top, it's going to stick, but it's stuck within its parent. So as soon as the parent starts sliding off the screen, oh, look at that, it goes with it. And then we have section two. And the section two stays with us, and then oh, it gets pushed off. And then section three, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can, <laughs> we're back at section one because I copied and pasted there. Um, so you can see how that's working like that. Now to make it a little bit more clear, if that's a little bit confusing, I'm going to put a border on these. So the whole thing, it's the same as what we were looking at just here, where it has to live within the space that it's in. So this is sticking in, it's going to stick top zero of the viewport as long as it's still inside its parent. The parent here is super important. It cannot escape from the parent, which is completely different from position fixed. So as I scroll down, you can see it hits, it gets to the bottom of the parent. There's a little padding on that or margin. Um, so it gets to the bottom of the parent and then it has to slide away with the parent. And then same thing with this number two, number two can slide with us, but then once the parent pushes it, oh, it has to push off. So that's really, really cool and really, really handy. And you can pull off some really cool effects with that. I think, um, I, I just find it such a, a cool behavior that you can do with these sort of titles that slide down with the page, um, and then push each other out of the way. Super neat. This is the type of thing you'll see a lot of. Um, now this next one, this one, 
um, I really like. Now, I won't uh, claim this as my own. This, I got the idea from this um, from a CSS Tricks article. So I have linked to that article down below. They do a little bit more. They also have the top uh, sticking and the bottom sticking and stuff. So here, we just have this normal text, but then keep your eyes near the bottom where there's nothing, there's nothing, and whoop, that sort of comes in, and then it sticks. Like, that's, that's if it just unhid something, but that unhidden thing stayed in place, it would be cool, but the fact that it sticks and stays with it as we keep scrolling is just the magic there, and I, I love this effect so much. And it's not hard to do. Um, so here's the, the version where we don't have anything going on right now. Um, let's go look at our HTML. Actually, really quickly, I just have a big div for all this text. So all of my paragraphs there, well, I have one big box. So one, one big box that has everything, well, not the top, but everything here is in one big box. Um, but then I have one div and everything just disappeared on me. There it is. Um, so I have one big div that has all of this, and then I have this hello there, which is its own class, its own thing down at the bottom. And what we're doing is, Let's go and check this out. Um, on my hello there, all we need to do is we're going to add a position position of sticky. Um, this is one thing, the CSS Tricks article, they put this, they put everything in one big div and they sort of did this complicated background gradient thing, which is really cool. Really, like as far as CSS Tricks go, it's, it's cool that they did it that way. Um, and it made a little bit less markup because they didn't need the content box or this box content thing that I did. Um, I just thought this was a much easier way to do it. Because with the position sticky on there, we just have to tell it where it's going to stick to. So I'm going to say stick to bottom 100 pixels. So what that means is it's sticking. So it's going to, it's sticking to the bottom 100 pixels away from the bottom of my screen, and as I scroll down, it's sticking there. But remember, it has to stay within the parent. So as the parent starts to scroll off, it's scrolling off with it. So you can sort of see how that's working right now. But where the real magic comes in is when you add a Z index on this. So Z index negative one to push it behind everything else. And now, look at that. Now it's behind this. So my box content here, I have put a background of white on it. If I didn't have that background of white on there, it would go behind, but you would see it because it's a transparent background. So it's going behind on the text. You can act, you can see a bit more of how it's working now. It's scrolling down with the parent, scrolling down with the parent, and then whoop, it gets stuck there. Um, so it is scrolling with the parent. So the parent is the box here. So let's just add, uh, I'm going to put a, whoops. Uh, let's put a border of two pixels solid. Uh, we oh, black is fine, so it has to live within its parent, right? So that's the whole thing: is it's scrolling down, it's scrolling down, it's scrolling down, but then the parent starts scrolling off the page, so it has to go with the parent. So that's the first part of the trick. The next one is having the background of white on this other text. So now when it's behind that text, we can't see it, so it's hidden, it's hidden, and then it starts to show up. So there you go, and then we can turn off that border now. And by doing that, it just looks like it sort of comes out of magic. Hello there. And it sort of scrolls in and scrolls out. So really, really cool. Um, you could add a on my box content here, a nice name. <laughs> you probably come up with a better name. Um, but if you put it like a box shadow or something, it looked like it's underneath it. So it's instead of just appearing out of nowhere, it's sort of this element that's sliding down and it slides out from underneath it. Um, so I'm sure you could come up with some really cool things like that or play around with this. I think that's... I, I don't think of a lot of use cases for that, but I think it's a really cool and really fun effect. I, I honestly, I'm just, I'm, I'm scrolling up and down just looking at that. I love it so much. <laughs> it's just so much fun. Uh, so I hope you like that too. I thought, I thought it was cool. I don't know when exactly I would use that in like production site, but I'm sort of looking for the opportunity to use something like that because it, it's cool. It's fun. It's unexpected, but it's not, I could see it being used in like a fun user experience type of way. Um, in, in the right situation. So hopefully I can come across something like that, but maybe that falls a bit into my challenge for you. So as I said at the top, I'm issuing you a challenge. And what that challenge is, is to show me how you can use position sticky. This could be on something you've already done and you just want to showcase it. It could be you saw this and it gave you an idea for something, or you just want to try something out to get in on this challenge, whatever it is, I'm happy to take it. So it doesn't have to be specifically built for this challenge. And I'm giving you one week to get it done. So on April 10th, you have until April 10th to get your submission in. 
and it can be whatever it is. I just want to see how you can use position sticky in the wild. Come up with a cool, fun way of using it, uh, whatever it is. And you can submit it uh, sort of however you want. The preferred way is social media, because I'm on there. Well, actually, the preferred way is Twitter, because I'm on Twitter a lot. But if you're more of an Instagram person, that's cool too. Either way, just hashtag sticky challenge, and uh, it's also easier to share links on Twitter. So I think Twitter's the best way to go. Uh, but if you're not on Twitter and you want to get it to me, uh, you can also email me at hi at kevinpell.co. Just make sure that you put in the, just the, what do they call it? The subject. They call it a subject. In the subject, just put in sticky challenge or sticky challenge submission or something like that just to make it easier for me to find the ones that are related to it. And what we'll do is, um, so the deadline is the 10th of April, so April 10th, 2019. As long as it's in by that day at any point, I'm going to have another video coming out on that day where I'm doing my own submission for it, where I'm, I'm trying to come up with a cool design. And my idea for that, for my own, is I'm going to try and do a nice design that happens to you sticky in a way that makes sense. So it's not just to tack it on there. I want to come up with a nice design, something cool, something that looks good, me coding the whole thing up from scratch that just happens to use it in a fun or creative way. And I, I don't know what that is exactly. And I'm thinking of like a case study for a portfolio, but I'm not 100% sure. I have some ideas, but we'll see where, where I get to with that. Uh, so that's what my plan is a little bit. But I want to see what you can do with it. I want you to show me cool stuff, cool ideas, different ways you can integrate it. It doesn't have to be something you built for this challenge. It can be something you've already done. Maybe you did something really cool at Position Sticky already. So whatever the situation is, whatever you've come up with, share it. It could be something really simple, a nice little code pen. It could be a production site, whatever it is. I'm happy to look at it. And then, so on the 10th, I'm going to be putting out my other video. That's also the deadline. And then I'm going to be watching all, or watching, I'm going to be looking at all your submissions. We'll go through them. For the week after, I'm going to make the video where I've showcased them all. We're going to look at them. I'm going to go through all the submissions and sort of highlight all the cool stuff that we see in them because you guys do cool stuff and I want everybody to see all the cool stuff you're doing. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing your submissions so much. Um, I also want to say a big thank you to my patrons, patron, patrons, I always say it wrong. I always say Patreons and then I have to re-record and say patrons. So a big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here at this channel. If you'd like to help support me or if you're curious about what's going on there, I do post extra content a little bit. There's some insider stuff, some scripts that you can get before my stuff is done. I try and get early, the videos out early there a couple days. Sometimes it's one day, sometimes it's three days early. Uh, so there's sometimes early access. Uh, I occasionally run polls there on future content. I do vlog on there as well where I don't do them very often, but every now and then just updates on stuff that's going on with me and, and everything like that. So if that sounds cool to you, check out the link in the description below. A massive thank you to Lauren, who's my supporter of Awesome over on Patreon, just for the generous contribution. Thank you very much for that. Thank you again for watching. Thank you very much. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.